Your plastic waste in your future 3D print model, is that possible? That is cannibalism. <laughs> it's sort recycling. Of. It's recycling. <laughs> right here on Zachary's 3D prints. Hey, this is uh, Bill. He uh, represent, recreated 3D. So tell me more about uh, the recreator and the stuff people can do yep. with waste filament or waste plastics. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, Josh designed the uh, recreator um, 3D project and it started out with the Pultruder. We had the Mark V, which is where I started my uh, my first one. It's built off of a, uh, an old Ender 3 that you might have sitting around. Um, it worked great. And then uh, Josh went and redesigned it and made the Mark VI, which is a super small, compact, fully uh, 3D printed frame uh, filament puller. And you can see like everything in here is 3D printed and it used to have 2020 aluminum extrusions, but now they're 3D printed as well. So the entire frame and gears and everything are 3D printed. The only parts it uses is a uh, control board. This one happens to be the Creality uh, version 1.1.4 8-bit control board. So you don't need any heavy, fancy new boards. If you replaced or upgraded your board, you've got one. Uh, one stepper motor, one hot end, heater cartridge, thermistor, and one screen. That's it. Those are the only parts that it needs to create one. So if you've had an Ender 3 or another printer you've upgraded, you have all the parts you need to make one. And what we do is we take a soda bottle or a pet, uh, pet one bottle, you cut the bottom off, you run it through the, uh, the uh, community film uh, bottle cutter and you make this long ribbon. And then with the long ribbon, you take the end of it, if you can find it, there we go. You take the end of the ribbon, put it inside the, uh, the, uh, the hot in there. It'll come out the, where the nozzle is. You take a little pair of needle nose pliers, pinch it and start pull, uh, heat up the, uh, the nozzle to 210 degrees Celsius. Once it heats up, you can start pulling it through. And then there's little holes in the side of the drum here that you can feed the, the started filament through. And then it'll just slowly spool it up and pull your rest of your bundle through and make a spool of filament. But just a little thing about the nozzle, the filament diameter is 1.75. Yes. So yeah. that means that uh, if you are going to do this, the hot end needs to be adapted to the 1.75. Yeah, yeah. The Does it need to be a little bit bigger or not? I so in my experience, I found I like to make mine a little bit smaller. Uh, Josh has like all the instructions and everything how to because you take a drill bit and you drill out the nozzle to the right diameter. And I like to print. I like to pull my filament a little bit smaller because sometimes I get inconsistencies in diameter. And when I, I first did uh, my first pulls, I had a nozzle that was exactly 1.75, and unfortunately, I didn't do such a good job pulling my filament, and it was kind of bubbling a little bit or swelling. And yeah. It jammed up my nozzle. So my, my printer. So what I do is I print it a little bit smaller. I end up pulling about uh, 1.65 millimeters, which is really easy to compensate for in your flow rate. And plus, when you're making it, you're taking that ribbon and turning it into a tube. So you're already dealing with a, uh, a hollow point in the middle. So you have to bump your extrusion rate up. So I print it 150% flow rate and it prints perfectly. So this is our starting solution to get people into recycling plastic bottles and, and starting to reuse some of your stuff. But unfortunately, the, the solution only uses the center part of the bottle. You still have the bottom and the cap. So Teaching Tech came out with the filament pelletizer, the yeah. free open source. So it's, you know, hook it up to your drill and it feeds in filament that you have left over to make pellets for re-extruding new filament and or injection molding or whatever. So we looked at it with this idea of using a router bit inside to cut everything up and thought, well, what else can we chuck in there? And so on the Discord, we worked together and in this, as a community came up and designed the micro pellet shredder. Uh, we nicknamed it the Chop Suey Mini. And, um, the Chop Suey Mini? Yeah, or Chop Suey Micro, that's right. Okay, cool. And uh, so it just uses a, uh, a flush cut router bit you can buy on Amazon. They sell them in a two pack for $15 US. And then it uses a stainless steel ruler as a cutting interface with the blades to cut against. The first couple iterations didn't have that. Uh, Hal9000 is his username on the Discord. He came up with a good idea. And when we were testing, when I was testing this, you know, you ask what, what can it cut? If you notice the, uh, the parts should look awfully similar. Like this is Mark, this is version five. Well, version five, eight, version four, and version four, eight, version three to test it. So it works great. And I printed with 100% infill solid, PETG. And then um, if you look at all the, the bits in there, this is the kind of grinds you can get if you run it through a couple times. And all the orange dots in there should look pretty familiar. It's all the predecessors to the current version of the shredder. So, so the youngling eats the, uh, the, the older ones. Yep, exactly. <laughs> that is cannibalism. <laughs> It's sort recycling. Of. It's recycling. We <laughs> call then, it recycling, people. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, on the side here too, these got these bolts. Um, these bolts are used to push on the ruler to adjust the depth of where the ruler is to the cutter. Because everybody's printer is a little bit different. If you, I use PETG. If you print it in PLA or ABS or anything like that, you may need to adjust it because you need the, the distance to be really tight. So we built the built tolerance in here so that way you can adjust it. 
and so you can set the depth of how close the cut is. Another nice thing too people are concerned about is safety. We, we were, we're in the process of designing one that uses a bigger cutter to cut bigger things, but um, it was a little bit dangerous because there's a lot of torque involved and stuff, so we haven't released it yet, but, but this one, we designed the hopper so you can't fit your fingers inside, no matter how hard you try. And my kids at home, their fingers are too short to get to the cutter. So no matter how hard you try, you won't be able to get touch the cutter. And vice versa, same, same with the bottom. If the bottle's on as it's supposed to be when you run it, you can't get in contact with the cutter. So it's nice and safe. And there's a plunger that I had. It's no longer here. <laughs> um, you, you fill it up. Did the grinder, the shredder, eat it? Yeah, no. <laughs> so the, the plunger's designed with a T on the top and like it's like a finger guard. So as it goes down, it'll eventually come into contact with the top here and won't go down any farther. So it goes right up to the cutter and stops. So it pushes all the material down and that way you're not jamming a finger down or a screwdriver. Um, I had it, unfortunately, I think it, someone may have taken it or forgot they had it when they left. Um, but uh, yeah, so that way you can clamp this down to your table, hook up a power drill to it, just any, any electric drill, and then you fill it up and use the plunger to push all the material down as it spins and cuts. Then you can grind up all your, uh, we, like I said, we were designing it to use the bottle tops and spare prints. And someone was mentioning it would work works great for bamboo printer poop as well for recycling. So everyone's got a bamboo printer now and, and oodles of waste material. So. But does it fit in, in there? Yes, yep. So if you can't get it to fit or it's, it's you get a really big poop, <laughs> Um, I use these uh, tin snips or you know, metal metal cutting. They're really cheap on Amazon again, a couple of maybe $10, $15 if you get the fancy ones. And you can use these to cut just about any any hunk of plastic or if you have uh, wire cutters or flush cut cutters, you can use that to make them smaller. This, uh, the shredder will shred anything that fits in the hopper. Then we see also something like this. Yes, yes. The uh, multi-filament joiner. <laughs> yep, so Josh. What does it do? Josh sent me this, unfortunately it received, I got it in the mail like three days before the convention, so I didn't have enough time to, to play with it and to, and to learn how to use it. But the, um, he's got all the information online and all the, all the files are on, um, on uh, printables. And so what you do is you take your uh, two bits of pet filament because you want to make one longer one. You put them in the middle there. You'll notice there's a little uh, Ender heater block in there, a Creality style heater block. And so it'll heat up the two ends of the filament, and they weld together, and then it'll switch over and turn the fan on and cool the block down. So that way it keeps that, that size. And once it's cooled down, then you can pull your filament out the other end and you have one continuous spool of what used to be two, two bits of filament. Yeah, because from the PG bottles, because they, they are small, yep. you will get small bits like that. And with, the, with this joiner, you can, you know, get a longer string of filament. Yep. And this guy was 3D printed from six two liter soda bottles. You can kind of see the little bit of the layer lines, but most of it was like Mountain Dew bottles. Everyone loves the green Mountain Dew bottle color and prints, but this guy was made from six bottles at the same time. They just ran in sequentially. So. And if you don't, if you don't have enough parts to, to make one of these joiners, the uh, filament runout sensor on your printer works great. Once your once the strip is done, it lets you know you load up the next one and it just keeps going. So there's different. We're trying to make the um, recycling your plastic, uh, you know, uh, approachable to the average user, the average average maker. And so we've got different levels of what you what you want to invest in or become a part of. Like you can just pull your basic filament and use a runout sensor and just do that, or you can get into like filament extrusion or a pellet extruding printer, or you can join all your filament it together it's 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 really we have a lot of options for you to get involved and start start recycling and also to add uh, like if you have a prusa mark 3s that has a direct drive oh, it yeah. has a filament run out sensor just above the uh the, the extruder yeah. it makes it even more sense yeah. to uh, to use that for these kind of projects because the longer the tube is before the the, the filament run out sensor before the uh, actual extruder you get you know more benefits out yeah. of it so one thing i i use a I, i'm still using an ender 3 with a bowden tube set up i know it hurts every time i use it <laughs> i want a good one but what i do is i'll load the bowden tube up like i'll go to the extruder motor and i'll load it all the way up until it gets to the nozzle then i cut it off and so i've got the bowden tube filled with part of one spool and then i'll start another spool so it's almost like i've done part of a filament run out to negate that loss in the bowden tube so yeah, for the reality and the three machines, the pathway is not that very long. Yeah. But thinking about the Bamboo Labs 3D printer oh. where you have an AMS running oh, on, yeah. it's yeah. it's not most I ideal. So yeah. you need to use something like this to get a very long strand of filament in yeah. order to make it work. Yeah. yeah. If everybody is interested in this project, where can we find those 
materials. You can go to uh, recreator3d.com and it's got, uh, that's our website. It's got all the information on there. And if you're interested in um, downloading and making the uh, uh, plastic shredder, just check out my username on printables. All the projects are free, open source. We just ask for, let people know where you found it from. And come join us on the Discord and uh, come join us in our shenanigans. Like I said, the community bottle cutter, the uh, uh, Chop Suey Micro. We're designing this stuff on the Discord all together. We're working out designs. There's some awesome people on there. Like I said, Hal 9000, he's really good with Fusion 360 and, and everyone's always eager to help and contribute. And we're looking forward to help move the community forward and keep making, uh, help everybody recycle a little bit, so. So thank you uh, very much, uh, Bill. Thank you. That is so awesome how you can repurpose your plastic waste into very beautiful 3D printed models, making your own filament, right? Soon, I'm going to continue with the poor man's Prusa. If you don't know what that project is, check out the very first video that I made about the poor man's Prusa, i3 Mark 3s right here.